Welcome to the Fox One Corp series of CU training videos. I'm Dave Springford. Please check out my website at www.fox1corp.com for all the gliding products that I can supply. The link is posted in the comments section below. Please subscribe to this Fox One Corp YouTube channel, and if you have any questions, please post them in the comments. In the third video, I showed you how to use the view menu to access various pages within CU. In this video, I'll show you more tools that allow you to navigate around the screen, turn layers on and off, as well as the waypoint and task pages. At the bottom left corner of the CU window is a little toolbar that determines what actions are performed by the mouse within the active window. By default, that toolbar is set to pan mode, and pan is the little hand icon. If we take our mouse into the root window and we left click and hold, we can drag the map or we can pan any direction that we want so we can move to an area that we want to focus on. The next tool that's available, if we click on the hand icon, we change the tool from pan to measure or ruler. This allows us to take rough measurements on the screen. So for example, if I want to know how far it is from this turn point in the flight, diagonally across to this turn point, again, I can left click, hold, and drag my mouse. While still holding the mouse, we can look down in the bottom left corner beside that little ruler toolbar, and we can see a distance of 130.7 kilometers with a bearing of 74 degrees. And so that's a useful tool to get rough measurements but not something we'd really want to use for task planning. A third option that we have on this toolbar is to click again and we get a magnifying glass with a plus sign in it. This is a zoom tool and what this allows us to do is zoom into any area of interest on the map. So we can take again left click, drag, and we can draw a box around an area of interest. So there's the first turn point and I want to take a look and see did I get into that observation zone? So again, I can zoom in even further and we can take a look and we can zoom in just a little bit further and we can see there's one point, one fix just coincident with our observation zone. In this case, this is an OLC task and the observation zone was selected based on the fix. So we know that we're in. Zooming out, there's a couple options. If you have a scroll mouse, you can simply use the scroll wheel on your mouse, or if you have a touchpad that allows two finger gestures, you can zoom in and out using that touchpad. So we can see I was able to zoom in and out there. We'll zoom back in. And the other thing that we can see is up here, there's another toolbar where I can drop this down and I can select the fit flight option. And that puts it back so we can see the entire flight on the screen. So those are useful little tools. Also down at the bottom in the left corner are some layer controls. And what we can see down here is you can see a W, A, V, R, S, and M. So those are various layers that can be turned on and off. The W represents waypoints. So if I click W, I can turn on the waypoint layer and I can see where all the waypoints for whatever file I have loaded into CU where they're located on the map. And so all these little blue dots that have appeared on the screen, these are various waypoints that come from the file. The next layer I can turn on and off is the airspace layer. If I click on this A, we can see, a little difficult to see with the map background, but we can see a red box here for airspace. We can see a red circle. There are some green airspaces that are really difficult to see, but you might just be able to make out this green line here. So we can turn the airspace layers on and off. You can change the colors of all those to make them more visible. You can also change the background of the map and we'll get into that later. The V represents vector maps. And this map that's loaded right now is a vector map. So if I click and turn the vector map off, all the map layer is gone. And now we can actually see the airspace and the waypoints a lot more clearly. Most of the time we want to leave the vector map on and we'll adjust the colors of our airspace so that we can work with our map. The other is R and that's for raster maps. And the raster maps are things like sectional charts that you can load in 
independently. They don't come with CU as the vector maps do. There is also S, and this S is for satellite. So we can click that, and we can see satellite. Once again, since we're still in Zoom, we can say, well, there's an area of interest I want to take a look at. So let's go back to that first turn point, and I can draw my box around the turn point and zoom in and get a better look at what's happening around the turn point. The satellite images are streaming from the internet, so you have to have a live internet connection, and you can see they're also loading in at different levels of detail as we zoom in and out. Depending on your bandwidth, sometimes it takes a little bit of time for these to load. So once again, I'm gonna turn satellites off and go back to our map, and the easiest way is to fit the flight so we can see the whole thing again. The final letter that we have down here is M, and M represents METEO. So that's weather in French, and that allows us to turn on and off our weather layers. And we'll talk in detail about that in the future, but you can buy a subscription to Top METEO, or you can buy a subscription to SkySight, and this M icon controls whether those layers are turned on or off. So that's the basic layer control in a way to zoom. Another option in terms of panning is we can move on the screen. If we take the cursor over to the edge, you can see the arrow changes now to a larger left facing arrow. If I have the arrow in that position and I start left clicking, each click moves the map to the left. If I want to move to the right, I can go over to the right side and again, I can left click and move. If I happen to go up to a corner, you'll see I get a diagonal arrow. So I can move the map diagonally with each click. So we'll go down to the bottom left and we'll move it back to center. So that's another way we can move around if we don't have the pan icon selected. So finally, the other thing I want to show you in this video is the waypoint and task pages. It's another really complex area of CU and that'll be the focus of future videos, but I think a quick introduction here is worthwhile. You can access the task and waypoints through the edit menu. We can go to edit and then down to my waypoints and tasks, or we can access them more quickly through these quick icons. The little yellow flag looks like a flag on a golf course. That's our waypoints icon. And right beside it is a little triangle with a pencil. That's our task icon. If I click on the waypoints icon, it'll show me a list of all the waypoints that I have loaded in the current file. Over here on the right hand side, there's a little icon that looks like a Windows Explorer view options icon. And if I select the little drop down box beside it, I can change what I want to see within the waypoint. So right now we're on waypoints details, I can change that to waypoint list. And so now I just see the names of the waypoints instead of all the coordinates and all the information that comes with them in waypoint details. I can also change the task. And there's two ways. I can either use the task icon we looked at up here or within this drop down, I can select task details. And in here, this is where I would build a task. And like I said, we'll spend another video on how we're going to build tasks. We can also select map so we can see map within and we can start drawing a task here. So that's a really quick introduction to the waypoint and task windows. One thing to realize is that within CU, we have, as I said before, windows on top of windows. So when I open this waypoints and tasks, it's actually a window that's been opened over top of our map. And so like most windows program, if we go to windows here, we can see a list of all the windows that are open. So one window that is open, number one, is the demo IGC file. And the second window that's open is the waypoints and tasks. So I can go back to my route by going to Windows and selecting that window one. I can go back to waypoints and tasks that are already open by clicking on it. The other thing is if I'm finished with the windows and tasks, I can simply go up here and close that window with the standard Windows X command. So thank you for watching uh, this video. I hope you've learned something new about CU today. Please subscribe to my Fox One Corp channel to see more CU videos and visit me on the web at www.foxonecorp.com.